Okay, it's time to start our presentation. Uh, thank you for choosing our presentation as your first breakout session in Tokyo Summit. This presentation is a user story of NTT Resonant. Uh, I'm glad to get a uh, super user award and uh, thank you for all of the community enabling our services and I, I'm it's a great honor to be a part of the uh, uh, OpenStack community. And we will share you what we learned to build web infrastructure with OpenStack as much as possible in the next 40 minutes. We are working for NTT Group and have these backgrounds. My name is Toshikazu Ichikawa, working for NTT, and his name is Tomoya Hashimoto, working for NTT Resonant, and his name is Kazuhiro Toriyama, also working for NTT Resonant. In this presentation, we cover these five topics. After introducing NTT Resonant business, we talk about our infrastructure design, that is how we apply OpenStack to our infrastructure. And we talk about not only the infrastructure, but also the framework we built on top of OpenStack to support our services. Especially, we explain how we set up a VM by using Puppet in connection with OpenStack. After that, we also talk about our operation and monitoring, both of OpenStack and the VMs. At the end, we share our current issue and future plan. Let's start from NTT Resonant Business. This slide shows what is NTT Group and the position of NTT Resonant in the group. NTT Group is uh, one of the largest information and communication technology company. Our global operation generates a total revenue of $112 billion, and we are 240,000 skilled professionals. We are the largest brand in data hosting and global IP backbone. NTT Resonant is a 100% owned subsidiary of NTT Group. Its parents are NTT Communications, providing long distance and international communication business, and NTT Docomo, providing mobile communication business. NTT Resonant collaborates with NTT R&D to build its platform, develop new technology, and provide solutions to customers. This is the business area of NTT Resonant. NTT Resonant is responsible to provide internet services of NTT Group. We provide a wide range of services to individuals. We provide the internet site portal, GU, the e-commerce site for communication devices, NTT X store, and smartphone application, and so on. Moreover, based on the technology we foster in B2C services, we also provide, provide platform type services and customer centric services for enterprise business. For example, we provide cloud-based testing solution for mobile application development, disaster prevention response solution, and healthcare solutions. If you are a smartphone application developer, please check our remote test toolkit. You can use physical smartphone in our data center for your development. We also provide and operate many services of customers, even though we are not in the position to disclose the name of the services here. But for example, we operate some services of Japan's largest mobile network operator, Docomo. We operate search services, content services, and mobile applications for them. NTT Resonance core business is to provide the web portal site Gu. Gu provides more than 60 services, including web search, blogging, news, and Q&A site. Even though I don't explain the detail, I believe this image gives you an idea of Goo's variety. Goo was launched in 1997. Much of this year was the 18th anniversary of Goo. And what is the scale of Goo? Uh, it, uh, generates, it serves to 170 million unique users per month, and it generates 1 billion page views per month, and it's growing day by day. Goo is the third largest web portal in Japan. 
I think uh, if you are coming from foreign country, uh, Google is uh, famous, and Google and Google are a similar name, but it's different company. And actually, Google is about one year older than Google, and now Google is operating on top of OpenStack. That's the brief overview of NTT resident business. Now let's move on to the first main topic about infrastructure design. Uh, let me talk how we meet OpenStack. We started our OpenStack development project in March 2014. I will explain what was required to us, uh, what we have to achieve at the time. It is already decided what we uh, stopped uh, using existing data center and migrate our system to another data center because of certain business reason. Uh, the existing contract term uh, was fixed. Uh, so we had to finish to migrate our system to another data center by the end date. Uh, secondly, we need to accelerate our business speed as fast as public cloud. At that time, we started, we already used uh, the virtualization technology of KVM at large scale, but we manually created uh, VMs and uh, managed them by operators. Uh, manual, operation had, uh, manual operation had the speed limit, and it was a problem that we couldn't uh, create a lot of VMs within a short time frame. We had to resolve these problems. Thirdly, we need to provide a common and effective method to deploy not only a VM itself, uh, but also middleware and configuration inside the VM. If we provide only the way to create a VM and to manage VMs, then it's not different from subscribing to our public cloud service. What our application engineer wants this framework to cover our workflow to provide our web services. It's not only a, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, only to create a VM. It should uh, include more such as in installation and uh, configuration of middleware, as well as system monitoring of 24 by 7. I will explain how we addressed and achieved this from now. This figure shows our organization and uh, team structure. NTT resident platform team is uh, responsible uh, to provide the infra infrastructure to their uh, service teams. The team has about 10 members, but more than 300 members of uh, service team uh, demand to prepare resources. It's tough work to respond to them quickly and uh, efficiently. The platform team worked uh, with NTT R&D to design this project uh, since NTT R&D uh, had a knowledge of uh, OpenStack. We jointly design and uh, test an OpenStack environment for NTT resident platform. When we find, find uh, some issues of OpenStack, NTT R&D works to fix it in the OpenStack community. We follow this way to keep the uh, consistency with the community as such as possible. Uh, this is our timeline, how we deployed uh, OpenStack and uh, uh, managed uh, or our services on it. Our project started in March 2014. Our result, we throughout our internal uh, internal process and the uh, procurement time from hardware vendor, we had uh, OpenStack uh, would be able to st start working on October 2014 at the nearest. It's four months uh, after that, we had to migrate all our service from existing DC onto the new OpenStack infrastructure. We could achieve this timeline, uh, so today uh, we are here and uh, we can share our story. This is the scale of our OpenStack infrastructure. Uh, we introduced OpenStack as private cloud infrastructure at our main data center. It has been working in production since October 2014. 
It's working in stable more than one year. As of now, OpenStack supports more than 80 services and 1 billion page view per month. It consists of 400 hypervisor, uh, 4,800 physical cores. On top of it, more than 1,800 virtual servers are running. As you can see in the graph at the bottom right, the number of VMs keep increasing day by day. To support this scale, we use the Nova cell to accommodate a lot of server to single endpoint. This is a component which we choose. We used ISAL's release as it was the latest release when the project started. Since the project time and the resource were limited, we try to keep our infra infrastructure as much as possible because OpenStack is well designed as sets of component, it gives us the flexibility to begin with small sets of function and expand later if needed. OpenStack community is very active and provides us a lot of component and choices under the big tent, so I believe it's important to figure out some minimum set to satisfy your requirement as your baseline. Choosing small set also contribute to reduce the complexity of day-by-day -day operation. We chose six components to build our infrastructure. Uh, it includes a Swift, Nova, Grants, Horizon, Keystone, and Neutron. We didn't use Cinder since we have ever built our services with commodity server without using shared storage. So we just follow the same way. This is the way how we deploy OpenStack. We used OpenStack packages distributed by LDO community. The version of OpenStack was, as said, uh, IceHouse, and we installed CentOS 6 as host OS for servers. The reason we chose this dis distribution is that uh, our engineer were familiar with CentOS and Puppet. Therefore, we used Puppet to automate the installation, the infrastructure calls. RDO community already had a set of puppet man manifest to do that. We refer them so we could make it easy. Automation is important to enable us to set up a lot of server quickly. This is how we design the networking. Networking is a fun part of OpenStack design there are a lot of features and variety you can deploy. In this project, our initial step focused on the management of VM rather than networking, so we selected to begin with a simple networking architecture. That is using a networking provider network implementation. It only handles layer to connectivities for VM. So we needed to configure physical network appliance such as a router and a load balancer uh, manually outside OpenStack as we did before deploying OpenStack. And administrator manages the configuration of network devices for tenant. Any tenant is not able to manage their virtual network. That's the current status. The Community networking guide has a good reference that is similar to our implementation. If you need more detail, I recommend to check the guide shown here. This is our system architecture and HA strategy. The system consists of six types of nodes. All nodes except computer node has high availability mechanism. To make them highly available, we use RapidMQ, MariaDB Galera cluster, Pacemaker, and HA proxy. With deploying at least two nodes per node type, these are fully redundant and tolerate to single node failure. However, a computer node doesn't have a HA mechanism. The system doesn't provide high availability for VM. Uh, that's a concept of design, so it is responsibility for an OpenStack user and application to take care of the high availability of the services. I talk what we contributed to the community related to this deployment. When we tested OpenStack, we found some bugs. 
So we fixed them and contributed those to community app story. One bug was critical for us, shelp, one of Nova function. Uh, didn't work with Nova cell deployment at the time. We use shelp and unshelp as a part of a workflow. Our user or administrator moves VMs from one computer node to another with shelp and unshelp to have a maintenance of our servers. So it was important. Uh, sometimes uh, when we use a new feature at a minor use case, you may hit a bug or find a problem. I want to say that it, it is important to share issues and practice each other in the community. It may help you find a solution more efficiently than uh, struggling alone. And I talk about which part we customize OpenStack to adjust our environment. We didn't want to modify the code because we know it's cost to maintain. However, we decided to modify Horizon. The reason we modified Horizon is to enforce our operation rules in the environment. For example, uh, it includes PM naming restrictions assumed by our other tools. Uh, as shown the figure, our horizon pop up a warning if the name of VM doesn't match our rules. Because we assume our users only use through horizon rather than API, we didn't have to modify other component except bug fix bug ports. I believe each team has its own operation rule or workflow uh, or requirements for other system integration. Uh, to enforce or achieve it, you may need some development. That's how we build OpenStack infrastructure. At next, we talk about the framework we built on top of OpenStack for our services. From now, uh, I'd like uh, to explain the way how we set up our VM on top of OpenStack. As we said uh, before, we had to complete within four months from VM creation to service migration after OpenStack started in production. If we simply built uh, OpenStack and asked the engineers of the service side uh, to set up OS and middleware, it was uh, unlikely uh, the migration completed uh, within four months. We had about uh, 1,300 VMs we needed to migrate. We needed uh, to automate the steps uh, as such as possible. It was fortunate for, for us uh, that we had been working to implement the cause as Puppet Manifest since before uh, this project. Uh, we had a puppet manifest at the old existing data center. So we think it will be possible to achieve the timeline uh, if uh, this puppet manifest works well in connection with OpenStack. We build a op uh, framework uh, to apply ma puppet manifest to a VM on top of OpenStack quickly and easily. I'd like to explain how we set up a VM with a Puppet. We, uh, we deploy an individual Puppet Master per tenant. Uh, the Puppet Master executes our all VM uh, setups in a tenant. VM setup includes our Linux account creation and installation of uh, software uh, such as Apache and uh, MySQL and uh, distribution of uh, configuration file. An administrator of a tenant makes a manifest for a VM in the tenant. Even though we deploy a puppet master per tenant, we create a single repository of a manifest and each puppet master refers to the repository. After OpenStack user creates a VM by using Horizon, the user has to apply a puppet manifest to the VM. We created a synchronization tool to make it happen quickly and easily. What requires to achieve it uh, other than OpenStack and Puppet? 
we have to add a record of the VM to DNS and the LDAP and change our Puppet manifest. Our Puppet uses our host name as a key to apply a manifest. So the VM's host name needs to be resolved by DNS right after the VM creation. We use LDAP to manage the group of hosts when we have 10 web servers for some services. We want to handle them as a group with Puppet. We have to manage VMs with LDAP to do that. When we add the group of hosts, we have to add the entry of the host group to Puppet manifest. We implement the synchronization tool to manage the entries of DNS and LDAP by using OpenStack API when a VM was created. Let's see how it works. Our VM is created a tenant. The manage by uh, image file is grants uh, has a puppet agent installed. It is uh, able to connect a puppet master. Our synchronization tool is pulling Nova API every five minutes uh, and uh, it detects a new VM. The tool registers a record of DNS and uh, LDAP. Uh, the tool also modifies a puppet manifest for a VM, uh, for, uh, for a new VM and a commit repository. OpenStack user updates a puppet manifest from the repository and uh, is able to apply the Puppet manifest to the VM. We manually uh, did, did, uh, did these steps before we deployed uh, OpenStack. But after deploying OpenStack, we automated these steps by using OpenStack API. We addressed and resolved the issues with the mechanism I have explained. We were able to shorten the time to deploy our services drastically. We deployed more than 1,000 VMs within one month, right after OpenStack started in production in October 2014. It was impossible if we used minor operation as we used to do. We needed five business days to prepare our new VM before OpenStack introduced. Today, it is uh, possible to, uh, to deploy a new VM and uh, start uh, services uh, within 30 minutes. We could uh, remove the task to, uh, of two operators by reducing manual operation. We got another benefits by this integration of service uh, deployment with OpenStack. When we start a new services, a new service engineer is able to prepare the system by following this new mechanism. When an engineer assists other projects or hand over their tasks to another project, it is done efficiently with a common framework. Okay, I'll show you our monitoring environment briefly. So, uh, first of all, this is abstract. We have two monitoring environments, two monitoring systems. Uh, one is for cloud infrastructure. So, this side monitors network, physical servers, and OpenStack itself. And second one is for web services. So, we as an infrastructure member of NTT Resonant, so we are in charge of uh, providing standard service monitoring method inside our company, even in even on the OpenStack. So I'll discuss them later. And we utilize uh, Zabbix and Redmine for monitoring. One of the features is semi-auto VM monitoring. So our Zabbix detects VMs automatically and monitors them. And second one is auto-issuing ticket system for Redmine. Once our Zabbix detects an alert, uh, Zabbix automatically creates new ticket. Also, there is an operation center for us. Operators watch Zabbix 24-7, and they try first response to simple occasion, 
to simple problem. But in case of serious situation, telephone call wake us up even in midnight. So if our open stack had any trouble, any problem, they would call to us, info team members, and if any uh, web services has uh, had problem, they would call to web service team members. Go to our open stack monitoring. So this is simple severity order, we think. And uh, these are not all of our rule, but the uh, basis for us. Uh, API monitoring, uh, it means if any API doesn't respond, uh, Zabbix will send the highest severe alert to us. So it's quite a serious problem, as you know. And second one is process failure detection. As any process died, it should be repaired ASAP as soon as possible to keep redundancy. And third one is performance monitoring. Mm, it depends on middleware or software. So for example, MySQL connection number and so on. And the final one is most messy thing, you know, log monitoring. So at the beginning of using OpenStack, we decided to use, uh, we decided to uh, treat any log message above error level as problem. So we don't have any knowledge about OpenStack logs. So lack of knowledge reached out. So we've been trying, filtering, triaging problem-free log day by day, even today. Okay, now I'll talk for future operators from the aspect of operation. If you are a developer of OpenStack, uh, you already know about it. Uh, well, so you might sleep in this slide. Okay, what's this? Approximately 220 lines and 120,000 characters. Okay. You know that this is log message from OpenStack. When I try to just uh, launch just one virtual machine, I feel smell of madness from here. So without debug, log level, uh, debug logs, uh, it remains only 24 lines in here. So it's peaceful, I think. But uh, finally, we decided to uh, our open stacks. Uh, uh, finally, I, we decided to set our open stack with debug log level. So uh, explain the reason in this slide. Okay, uh, this is a very simple example uh, when uh, launching new instance failed. So let's try to analyze uh, this situation without debug logs. Okay, at first, uh, Nova returned accepting message, and second one is from scheduler. He said, attempting to build one instance. Okay, these are very easy to understand. But third one, it's called the beginning of uh, sleep or sleepless night for you. So the Nova scheduler showed an error. Well, it's a very simple error. So the list of message must mean the lack of free disks. Okay, and in this time, uh, we'd like to get more information to drill down this situation, but that's all what you can see without debug logs. So is it enough for newbies? So at least it wasn't for enough for us. Okay, next, go to next rebel. Uh, let's analyze the same situation with debug logs. At first, Nova returned, run filter returned 8080 host. This means there are 88 hypervisors uh, capable for, re uh, for required memory. Okay, so memory is not problem. And second one is also from scheduler. He said, does not have Brabra megabyte usable disk. It only has Brabra megabyte usable disk in 88 times from, uh, from all hypervisors. So there is not enough disk space in our hypervisors in this situation. This is it. So debug log is very useful, even in simple situations such like this. So this is the reason why we set our open stack with debug log level. Oh, sorry. Uh, so if you'd like to use open stack from tomorrow, uh, we suggest you to Please think about your logging environment for your health. <laughs> and uh, this slide is a kind of uh, promotion of NTT Group. So, uh, but this shows uh, importance of standpoint of op operators. 
So there are uh, another problem around OpenStack logs. So NTT suggested uh, and working on new function to solve this uh, solve one of them. So our suggested function realized to trace logs easily, even across components. In current log implementation, each component has each request ID. So we needed to map request ID for tracing logs, even in troubleshooting situation. But log formats doesn't allow us to find IDs easily. For example, creating a new volume from image, Cinder calls Grants API. The right uh, figure in the right side shows Cinder has the request ID rec A in red color, and Grants has request ID rec B in blue color. So of course you can find rec B in Cinder logs, but it's very deep, it's difficult to find. So our suggested function logs request ID mapping within one line in each color, like the bottom of this slide. It's easy to find. So this spec was approved by the community and we are writing code now. This story tells you operators can contribute to the community from one standpoint. Okay, this is the final slide for monitoring, about monitoring. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've been providing a standard monitoring system inside our company. So if you use so, uh, it might be important for you uh, what I talk in this slide. So we give, standard, we give standardized monitoring workflow for internal service developers, uh, such as standard monitoring item sets and our rules and parameter threshold of alert on the VIX and so on. So once upon a time, we configured manually Zabbix and Nagios, but uh, then think about monitoring scheme with OpenStack. On OpenStack, over 1,000 virtual machines are born and suddenly die, suddenly be killed. So can you configure manually in real time? It can't be. So we decided to add a new function to our Zabbix. It detects new VMs and starting monitoring semi-automatically. So in this case, semi auto means our engineers can choose uh, whether any node is monitored or not by themselves. So the function is based on auto discovery function of Zabbix, but we wrote some script to achieve our requirements. What does it mean? So it means we changed our workflow dramatically for the sake of OpenStack. So we suggest that before getting along with OpenStack, operators must think, must consider their today's workflow deeper for an efficient operation with OpenStack. That was the monitoring. And at last, I share our current issues and the future plan. I explained uh, that we are recently working on at the beginning of OpenStack deployment, we designed our flavor focusing in the migration project to, to migrate smoothly. The compatibility with old DC was more important than the resource efficiency. The VM specs some as old DC was the best solution for migration plan. Therefore, we designed uh, our flavor that has 37 gigabytes disk capacity for one gigabyte memory. However, when we looked at the uh, current usage, it turned out uh, that only seven gigabytes disk capacity is in use for gigabyte, one gigabyte memory in average. To improve the efficiency, we add the new flavors having uh, smaller disk capacity than current sets. And we are asking users to release unused disk capacity by switching to these new flavors. We are installing uh, additional memory capacity uh, to servers concurrently. We accept uh, we will be able to increase uh, VM density and uh, resource efficiency 1.3 times at, at least uh, or two times at our maximum. Uh, sizing is uh, always important. This is our future plan. 
uh, we are planning to upgrade OpenStack itself. A lot of new features are coming, but we can't use them as long as we stay at the ice house. Especially, we want to deploy load balancer as a service or Airbus. We configure load balancer by manual today. It's not provided to OpenStack user. We tested the Airbus API version 1, but it doesn't meet our requirement due to a lack of function. Since uh, Airbus API version 2 will be mainstream at the community, we are waiting uh, our vendor provides version 2 driver. We feel it's a better approach to address both of uh, Airbus deployment and OpenStack upgrades. We also have to establish our version up operation. We modify the horizon to make it fit our operation. We have to apply these patches to newer version again. This is a request on the um, deployment and the test effort, and it needs certain time. This uh, provides us uh, from upgrading frequency, uh, frequently and following every release. Uh, next, uh, release name is uh, Mitaka. NTT R&D locates at uh, Mitaka, and uh, we feel it uh, is a familiar name. We went to use the familiar Mitaka release. By the way, uh, these photos show our goods we hand out the uh, marketplace. Uh, Chinese uh, characters, uh, kanji uh, of Mitaka uh, is written a uh, sense sense and uh, tower. Uh, don't, fo don't forget to come to, uh, to our booth to pick up yours. After you check another user story of NTT group uh, next to this presentation. Okay, that's all we have today. This is uh, just a summary of what we presented. Uh, I'm gonna just emphasize a single point. Uh, OpenStack gives us uh, business speed and agility. That's the number one benefit and we have to think about uh, to introduce OpenStack. Uh, thank you for very much for your attention and uh, we have about two minutes remaining to answer your question, if you have. Okay. Next. Hi, that's a great presentation, thank you. Um, are you planning to upgrade directly from Ice House to Mitaka? Yeah. Yes, uh, I, we know. Uh, OpenStack only support uh, version up, step-by-step uh, -step one version. So we have to figure out the process uh, from Ice House to, at this point, uh, Rivati, or maybe uh, after that, Mitaka, uh, evaluating the all steps, uh, upgrade Ice House to you know, Kiro, Rivati uh, within a certain uh, maintenance time. That, that is a plan that we, we are planning. Uh, and the or, original plan we had uh, is uh, we will get upgrade much earlier, if possible, before this summit. But uh, uh, it turned out the uh, RDO package, uh, Juno, after Juno package, uh, required the CentOS 6, 7 for the host OS. So, now we are upgrading the uh, host OS. And uh, great things, uh, co community give us more uh, su suggestion. When I joined the operator meetup, uh, uh, there is a tool called Ambio. Uh, that, that will be another option uh, to make uh, uh, packages for uh, Juno or Kiro package for CentOS 6. But uh, uh, to avoid a complicated pass, uh, we are now just upgrading the host OS. That's our situation. Okay. And another. Do you have a 
So question is uh, strategy, how to design the flavor, VM flavor. So uh, at the time uh, we designed the flavor initially, uh, we just followed the previous uh, our K KBM setup uh, we used to use in the previous data center uh, to make the migration easily. But after that, to, after one year experience, uh, we measure the usage. Uh, I, I think w uh, we have to go I iterate this process to know uh, how the user using the resource efficiently. Uh, or just uh, asking the other user having a similar workload to share the such number. It's kind of magic number, but uh, uh, we shared our number in the previous slide. I hope it's gonna give you some hint. Yeah. Okay, so it's time to close wrap up, this, wrap up the session. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, our presentation. Uh, have a great <laughs> summit. <laughs>